To the fourth side, presented by UVA Community Credit Union and powered by Keswe. I'm your host, Amon Hawkins, and I appreciate you for taking time out of your day to participate in this 12th episode of the fourth side we got a great show on tap for you today as always make sure you're interactive right here on twitter also on facebook put in your questions so i can see them in the chat so i can shout you out and i can throw your questions to our great guests that we have today and boy do we got a treat for you man we get, we got somebody that used to wreck havoc in the backfield sack quarterbacks play for the patriots i think you know who i'm talking about got the school sack record got a guy that's legendary and that is chris slade is in the building today hey chris what's going on with you man i'm doing well man, man hey, look, i'm man, honored man, i got look, you on I'm... the show i know you're a busy man never <laughs> <laughs> too busy for 757 always gonna hey. always make time for the, for the crab Yes, sir, my guy. Yes, sir, my you know, guy. Chris Slade, if you don't know, and shame of you if you don't know, went to Tab High School along with Terry Kirby, fellow 757, a two-time All-American at UVA, still holds the school career sack record with 40, uh, tackles for loss 56, and he had 15 sacks his senior year, second-round pick of the New England Patriots in 1993. Slade, man, just reflecting back on your career here at UVA, uh, what's some of your fondest memories? I know chilling with the with the homies like uh, Terry and Sean, but just speaking about playing about Co- with Coach Welsh and, and the things you did here. There was a lot of fond m- memories playing at UVA. Um, I, I think the first thing that comes to mind definitely is playing for Coach Welsh. Um, him being, you know, such a mastermind, um, really understanding the game. I learned just a ton from him and having Rick Lance as my defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. And of course, I was a part of a lot of big games. Um, you know, the the Georgia Tech national ch- well game kind of that would be the you know end up being a national champions. Georgia Tech playing in that game in '90 and beating Clemson for the first time in school history was a big deal. And obviously, you know, going three one against the Hokies um, was was obviously great um, as well, man. So there's a lot of big games and a lot of fond memories of of my time at Virginia, man. So um, you know, and playing with Kirby coming in and Sean and Herman and. Ray Roberts, and it, you know it was a, it was a historic time, and I really enjoyed my time there. What were those practices like? You, know, you just named like, out some all time greats. You know, a guy that I speak to frequently, Ray Roberts. What was it like? You know, just trying to attack the quarterback with him uh, being in front of you. Being in front of you. You know, it, Ray and I had such a for one another, and we would only go against each other in practice. Because no disrespect to all the other offensive linemen on the team, and. Mm-hmm. And and I just felt like the only way I feel like I'd get better was I'm doing one-on-ones. Ray and I would intentionally try to go against each other every day so we can make each other better. Uh, I just didn't feel like, you know, going against the other guys that I was going to become a better player. And he for, and he pushed me in. It was very competitive. And we would try to kill each other during practice. And then after practice over, we were the first ones to jump in the cars together to go to Brian Hall. And, you know, and we played against – he would play against some of the big-time pass rushers in the ACC, like a Marco Coleman and – guys like that I would try to do things as a pass rusher so he could get ready to play and and vice versa if I was playing against maybe some of the best tackles from Clemson or Georgia Tech Mm -hmm. for an example um, he would kind of give me the same kind of set talk so I could really learn how to pass rush and do certain things but if it was nine on seven I would be on Ray's side it was seven if it was one on one we would be each other's side we would ask to go get each other not because it was we didn't like each other. It was just, we wanted to compete yeah. and I wanted to compete yeah. against him every day at the highest level for three years. And, and that's what we did in practice. Um, but we would try to kill each other, but then it was over with, we were boys still are, you know? Yeah. And you being know, that you was a great yeah, pass rusher great... from the seven, five, seven area. Uh, did that play a role in Lawrence Taylor being somebody you idolized being that he played your position? He went to Lafayette high school, which is in the seven, five, seven. Did that play a role of you trying to pattern your game after him? If you came in my dorm room back in like 1989 or 90, you would have saw LT posters all over the place. LT and Andre Tippett, who I ended up actually playing one year with in New England. Um, those are my guys. You know, I'll still look at LT film now, you know, and even as a coach and just kind of be like, man, you know, this, this guy was amazing. In my opinion, arguably the best football player to ever play the game, um, but definitely someone I looked up to. 
Yeah, I mean, I've heard that yeah, argument I mean, as well. I've heard, you know, I heard a lot of people, you know, of course they talk about quarterbacks of Tom Brady's and Joe Montana's, but when they talk outside of quarterbacks, um, it's amazing. People go Jerry Rice, but a lot of folks go Lawrence Taylor, man. And, you know, we take pride in that coming from the crib. And speaking of, uh, you know, you talked about looking at his film. You actually coach now, uh, Pace Academy, the head coach in Atlanta. How's that transition been for you? Because a lot of times players can't really communicate the things they learn as a player onto the next generation, being able to break things down um, to the fundamental level. So how's that transition been for you? I mean, real quick, if you don't mind. So, and this mm-hmm. is how, you know, me, you know, you're a defensive guy, I'm a defensive guy. You know, this is kind of how I judge, you know, LT. It, haven't, it hasn't been a guy in the history of the game, a defensive player where a whole entire offense was spending off season trying to basically game plan for one guy. He's the one guy that you had to double team every single play. They put in the two the two tight end offense, the Redskins did, just to try to block LT. And they mm-hmm. had the hogs back then. So, um, you know, and I saw this special on him one day, and uh, Chris Carter was talking on, I think it was ESPN, and they were talking about how when he was with the Eagles, they said, we're going to block, we're going to double team this guy every single play, no matter where he is. So when they're doing that kind of stuff to block a player in the NFL, as you know, man, they don't game plan that much for anybody. Then, you know, that guy's got to be something remarkable. Um, and I read all that stuff. And I, and like I said, I was a big fan and, and, and following him. Um, but in terms of transitioning, you know, when I got the job at Pace back in 2013, you know, I had, you know, I told people I had never been a head coach before, but I said, I'm going to take, I had, I had Belichick, I had Parcells, I had Pete Carroll, as my coach mm-hmm. in the NFL. And then I had Welsh at Virginia. And then I played for the legendary, as you know, Charlie Hovis down at Tab. Mm-hmm. So I had already been around a lot of good coaches. So I said, I'm going to take a little, and, and Al Groh, my guy, you know, as me, my DC, <laughs> you know, so I took a little bit from each coach and kind of just put it together to kind of formulate my own team, my personality of what kind of kids I wanted and what I was looking for. Um, I said, man, I might not be great, at doing this, I said, but I'll be a fool if I don't take a little bit from each coach that I've been fortunate to play for in George Seifert in Carolina. Um, and this kind of put my own personality into it because I like it. I enjoy it. Uh, being around so many great football minds has made the easy transact- transition for me, you know, yeah. in terms of just running yeah. practice, you know, running the drills, when to start practice, when to finish practice, seven on, nine on seven, install, walkthroughs. I just kind of go back and revert back to the things that I learned. And, you know, coach and the girl. Crow and I still talk all the time. We just talked a couple weeks ago. You know, just having a guy like that as a soundboard that I can always just kind of turn to. Coach Grow, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And, mm-hmm. you know, if you know Grow, man, he's always going to have an answer. You know, yes. and he's a uh, football yes, mind. And a long he's answer. Football <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I'm like, I got to go, Coach, man. But, you know, it's always great to have someone I can always lean on, man. But it's been a good transact- transition. No, definitely, man. That's, no, that's, definitely, that's great definitely. info. Uh, just pulling on all your previous coaches and and taking from them and, you know, making it your own. And the fact that you still reach out to them says a lot as well. Uh, We got some fan interactions. We got Mike Bland. He asked, Chris, what is your most memorable game at the University of Virginia? Beating Clemson for the first time in school history back in 90. um, Because we were on 28. Um, and mm. I'm sure this past year's team could relate to that by, you know, last year's team by beating Tech. But that was definitely the most memorable game. So, so and uh, also, just want to remind fans, you know, Twitter, Facebook, make sure you send your questions in. I definitely try to get them to Chris. And while talking about Chris, I got another guest who wanted to chime in and, and join this segment. You know, he's a pick em guru. His team is undefeated. So I guess we could, you know, bring him in and let him talk to you since his team is undefeated. That's the only reason why, you know. Can we bring that guest in? Because they don't like to wait because they undefeated. <laughs> Got Coach Jason Williford blessing us with his presence. I'm, I, you know, this is not ordinary people right here that's joining me today. So what's up? What's up, Jay? What's up, Hulk? Hey, it's game day, but you got my guy on, so I, I, I said – I'll jump on anytime. People yeah. don't understand the relationship Slade and I have. We stayed in touch, you know, ever since he graduated, I graduated. When I was in Boston University, we'd always get together when he was up with the Pats. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever I'm recruiting in Atlanta now, I stop by to see him. 
we're 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 just we're boys. He's 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 a good friend, um, and I'm I'm good to good to be on with him. And I'm just glad y'all got him on. You, yeah, you got him on. He was on time, but he's laying in the bed. So hey, I guess we just got to do we we deal with him on his off day being in the bed. <laughs> hey, you are truly his boy because you just dived him out. Just dived him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Brandon Johnson on Facebook. Appreciate you for tuning in, man. Salute to him. Um, Um, My boss would. Man, so I got to. So anytime I have a basketball and a football player at the same time, and y'all boys, basketball players, we swear we could play basketball. I mean, football players, we swear we could play basketball. So Jay Willie, can Chris hoop besides rebounding and fouling real hard? Yeah, he's got five hard fouls he's going to give you. (laughs) Yes, he, he could hoop. We used to have used some to good have games some good up games. at Slaughter back in the day, mm-hmm. but you know, but he was gonna give you those hard playoff fouls. I, I felt like he was Oakley out there. Mm. Big old dog. Big old dog. I tell you though, man, <laughs> we had um. I learned we we thought we could, you know we thought we could play with those guys, and I remember one day coming up in Slaughter, and I think it was Jay and Yuri and Corey, two. And it was, I guess, like the football players. And, and dude, we found out real quick that, you know, they're on another level. I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to mix the teams up, it's more competitive. But when they really wanted to play, I mean, we had, <laughs> we had nothing. Because they, they can get up down the court. You know, we're going to take 25 dribbles to get to half court. They're going to take two or three. And we just, we couldn't run with them, man. But when we mixed the teams up, it got pretty competitive, though. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's always hey, like, hey, they take, hey, they take ball it easy on us. Take it easy on us. And, and and conversely, we used to we used to condition with them in the summers, mm. right? We go mm-hmm. out on the football field, put our cleats on. We out on we out in the grass. We out on the field, you and that was our cleats. summer conditioning. You oh yeah, we put from? the cleats on. You know, we we had we had access to to some some hookups over there. But we can't get and none listen, of y'all shoes. How you getting our cleats though? We we got cleats. <laughs> basketball shoes i give him cleats oh, okay yeah cool. Oh, okay. okay cool yeah. okay so so we we get to running and we doing drills with you know and i always love football chris loves basketball i love football and and i get out there and i'm like man i can run with these dudes and we're doing sprints and you know you know, you get your 20 yards and your 40 yards man to get off the first five get off for football mm. players people don't understand Getting off the line, how fast y'all get off, it's unbelievable. And I'm like, God, I can't even keep up with the linebackers. <laughs> it, was it was unbelievable. And so you and got so slayed got... hand down. He in the three point stance. He drooling because he just he you know he working. Drooling. He in his element. Yeah. And I'm like, these true. dudes are animals. And I loved it. I loved every minute of the of the workouts. It was yeah, fun. I, I got... I had a question for y'all. Um, did they have an Army and Navy store here then, a.k.a. A&N downtown then? A&N, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on them A&N stores. Dude, every time Jay come to town, I'm like, Jay, give me some of them 14s, man. To this day, still hit me. Oh, yeah, they got, ni- oh, they, they got that nice shoes. They got, they got nice shoes, shoes over there. Yeah. yeah. Jay, I don't wear no 14, but I wear them. We'll help you up. We'll get you. We'll get you squared away. Man. Hey, Chris, man, why you on here? Um, I got to ask you about Coach Bronco Minahal and the staff because you're a little different. You're not only alum, but you're a head coach. Um, how is the recruiting process and those channels, you know, that pipeline opening up? How's that been since he's become the head coach? Interesting. You know, yeah. um, you know, and to be honest with you, I'm. You know, I'm a 757 guy. So the first thing I look for is how many guys we get from the crib. How many mm. 757 guys? How many guys from Richmond? How many guys from Northern Virginia? But I'm always going to look for 757 first. So I am, you know, uh, I wouldn't say taken back, but I'm surprised we don't get more kids from the tide water. Um, yeah. I know that, I don't, and I don't know the talent pool as well as you do still probably. Um, but I, I still read the Daily Press weekly and, mm-hmm. you know, just keep up with the top team. So I'm always going to do that. I subscribe to it online. Uh, but I mean, you know, Bronco has his way of doing things. I mean, he's going to recruit, uh, nationally. Um, and that's been proven. Um, but he's got to get what he, you know, thinks that fits his system and, and his personality and the guys that he wants to look for. So 
I'm, I mean, I'm always going to support UVA, uh, but I would like to see more kids from the top order coming to UVA. I mean, coming back to UVA. And I'm not saying that the, there aren't kids all over the country that aren't good, but end of the day, man, I, I still feel like we got the best football, you know? So that's just, that's my take. No, nah, I appreciate that take. Appreciate and Brandon that Johnson that asked, right. Chris, what is the strongest part of your basketball game? Well, they like these basketball uh, conversations. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. You I said fouling? You know did, did you just say fouling? Did you just say fouling? Listen, man, I played with Terry Kirby for four years. I tell people this story all the time. It was easy to get a 1,000 rebounds playing with that dude. I mean, he, he was shot every time. Because he shot every time. Yeah. 25 he told me. 25 he told me. He shot every, it doesn't matter what comes first. <laughs> yeah, man. I just, I really, like Jason, I enjoyed the game. I love the competitive side of it. Um, I like to get up and down. And, and, and so Jay and I, we talk opposite sports all the time. He'll call me and we'll talk football for 30 minutes and, and I'll talk to him about basketball. You know, he comes down here recruiting. I'm like, Jay, you got to go see this kid, that kid, you know, this kid can play, that kid can't play. And this is talking about hoops. So I, I, yeah. I you know, I enjoy it. Yeah. And shout out to John, man. Shout go who beat BC at UVA at coach Bronco. Hey, hey, Willifford, um, you know, I can't just have you up here and not ask about basketball. Uh, can I get a couple minutes? Cause y'all got a lot of players. Y'all deep, man. How, how is that as we- a coach knowing you got a lot of depth? It's a it's a good thing. It's competition every day in practice, which is which is always good. You you want the guys to compete and push each other, but but from a coaching standpoint, um, it's hard because it's hard to play everybody, quite honestly. Um, and so, you know, you want to keep guys ready when their numbers call, uh, mm-hmm. and and not allow the depth to be a detriment to your team chemistry. Um, Agreed. So you got to be, you know, you just got to, you got to pour into each kid and, and have them ready. And, you know, the biggest thing we can do is have them all buy in because you never know when your number's going to get called and um, just being ready. Um, so um, the depth is good. This is the first time in a long time we haven't had a transfer sit out or a red shirt guy uh, sitting out. So, you know, we've got yeah. quality depth one through 13 and, um, it makes for really, really fun competitive practices. Yeah, man. <clears throat> just watching you guys, man. It's I'm excited. I mean, just the shooters you have, the uh, just the versatility that those guys bring to the table. And you know, I'm a big Kihei fan. You know, that's my guy. So I, I, I yeah, like everybody. that. It's it, it's a backmate with him that you know he don't have to exert himself. So you know, I've been a fan of his because we the same height. So he give me hope that I still got a chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's tough. He, he's tough. We just got to, quite honestly, we got to buy in more to, to the defensive side. You got you got a all-time tackle for law sack guy on here, and, and he knows I'm a defensive first guy. <laughs> we got we to gotta play defense. And, and I think yes. um, we our mindset's got to get back to that. We, offense will come and go, but we better be able to get stops when we need to get stops. I love that. And that, that helps me segue to Chris. You know, our segment's coming to an end, but with an all-time great like yourself, is there anything you want to say to the Wahoo fans that, that love you and still follow you and excited that they get to see you today? Say thank you to all of, all the fans in Charlottesville and the whole state of Virginia. Um, man, it was the best four years of my life. You know, not, you know, after playing you know, in the league for a decade, and um, but just, man, meeting – you know, getting to know Jason and all the guys I came up with through the ranks and then watching you when you were at Hampton mm-hmm. High School come up right after, our, you know, our, you know, our class with, with, with Curry and Mondo and um, Biscuit and all, you know, just, just, just watching everybody grow and then literally, mm-hmm. you know, staying in touch with everybody, man. It was just the greatest four years and to stay in touch with you guys after 25, 30 years, man, it's just been, you know, been awesome. Um, just keep following the who's and, you know, keep supporting us and, I think, man, that things are going to continue to to do good, to continue to do well with the program, and just keep a close eye on them. I um I do have a question for you though, Hawk. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yep. what is How long yep. is is how long is Smith going to coach, man? Is is he is this is he still there? Is it forty six years now? Yeah, he's still there. Yeah, they, he's they're still trying there. to they, they're trying. look. He, he supposed to have been replaced the past four years, and he keep coming back. <laughs> it must be a great stipend or something down there. <laughs> Down there. <laughs> it's got to be close to 
Yeah, it's a long time, man. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's the go. I got a lot yeah. of respect and love. Yeah. Like, to do what he's done for 50 years like this in high school, year in and year out, that's that's incredible. They don't yeah, make him coach, like him anymore. Yeah, coach, yeah. Yeah, coach is, is a great dude, man. He's he definitely done a lot for my life. And just to help me transition to UVA, he was, you know, he knew I wanted to go to a Florida school, but, you know, he told me to talk to Coach Welsh. And we all know what Coach Welsh do once he talked to you. He closed the deal. So, um, yeah, I got a chance to play for not only – Coach, you know, Coach. Coach Smith, but Coach Wells from legend to legendary. So that that's dope. But we well, appreciate you, though, Chris, man. Well, and uh, if you're in the Atlanta area, make sure you go see Pace Academy and Pace support Academy. Chris and all that he's doing. We got a goat here. We got to give him their files while we're here. Definitely supre- appreciate you, bro. Jay Willie going to pick. Um, I think Bryce Hall beat you in your picks, but we're going to see what you do this time. All right, we're going to go to our right. first break. That's the fourth side. <laughs> find we have a way about us it comes from being unafraid of the hard things never losing sight of the little things and when all is said and done coming together to enjoy the good things because every inch every number every call we earn for the salt of the coast for the stones of the capital for the hug of skyline drive for all virginia To the fourth side, I'm your host, Amal Hawkins. This segment, ACC Pick'em with Jay Willie in the building. You know, he's a repeat Pick'em participant. That's because he's that guy, you know. And, again, his team is undefeated. If you don't know who his team is, you ain't paying attention to the NFL because they undefeated. What colors they wear again, Jay Willie? Black and gold, baby. Black and gold. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Bryce Hall, I think he, he went – did you go undefeated? No, I think you missed one, maybe. I remember. I, I I got the tech game wrong. I picked. I I want to say I picked since no Louisville to beat them that day, and yeah. I, oh, I, I yeah Louisville let me yeah. down. Louisville let you yeah they let you down. But yeah. Bryce Bryce Hall was perfecto. So we're gonna see what you do this week. He was Are trying to ready? pick. He picked. He picked smart. He went you know from his head. And, and was intelligent. I picked from the heart. I wasn't yeah. going with the Hokies. <laughs> we are t- we are talking about Bryce Hall. He's very thorough in how yeah. he approached yeah. things. So yeah, yeah. Shout out yeah. to Bryce Hall, uh, JTS Jets Jets Jets. So first up, we got number ten Miami at Duke, eight p.m. ACC Network. Who do you have? I'm going with I'm going with the U. I'm going with the mm-hmm. U. Um, the last they time still Duke got had a lot to on play the ropes. For. Say again? Yeah, they do. I said, no, nah, I was showing in the video. This is the last time where Duke had them on the ropes down there at yeah, Duke. Yeah, that was that crazy lateral <laughs> play. But I'm, I'm, I, yeah, that, I'm going with the U. They got a lot to play for. Um, mm-hmm. You know, people still talking, talking about, you know, they hadn't played anybody, whatever, the, you know, I, I think they're going, I think they're going to handle Duke, to be honest. Yeah, I can't. I can't bet against King, man. The, the kid's been phenomenal this year for the U, helping them get back on the map. That's why I guess Florida State panicking because Miami back on the map. So uh, I'm going with Miami over Duke. If this is basketball. I probably go for Miami over Duke. So either way, Miami. <laughs> Miami. So yeah, and, and my up, boy <clears throat> Junior Burrow. Let's see. My boy oh. Junior Burrow is a huge Miami fan. So I'm, you know. Much respect to oh, JB. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He he loved the U growing up. Oh, okay. So, Shout out to JB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So next up, we got a trap game. Trap, 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 trap game. Clemson at Virginia Tech. ABC 730. Prime time in Blacksburg. Prime time. It's going to be cold. And they got sunshine. Prime time. Who you got? No, that's no Burn. trap game. <laughs> that is not a trap game. Clemson is pissed off. They're going to play. They're going to run them out of Blacksburg. You, the end of the Sandman, forget about it. You, you, Trevor Lawrence going to throw for 350 or more in this game. 
But I don't. I mean, I can't follow that up. I'm not following behind that. So I'm gonna just let the video play. That you just dropped the mic. What you? What else you want me to say? You want me to really <laughs> try to jinx Virginia Tech and pick them versus Clemson? I'm not doing it. Won't do it. Not have. You know. Not have. This year, I've been picking Tech so they lose. But I'm. I, hey, nah. I, I'm going with Clemson. Oh, sunshine, them boys. They doing their thing. And um, next up. Another trap game, but it's on Monday night. It's a team called the Washington football team that's going to upset the Pittsburgh Steelers, some people was telling me. Is that hey, going to happen? Hey, listen. Or, or is the game going to happen? Is it not going to happen? No. I So I'm worried about the game because they already – this is how they've been doing us all season. <laughs> they they pushed us back from Thanksgiving. You know, they, they – so – if we play Monday, yeah, I am up. extremely nervous about this game because we always have a game or two that we that we give away. But after listening, and, and I'm not going against my boys, I'm just nervous. But after listening to Mike T, after listening to Mike T, he called their performance a JV performance. I got to think we coming out the gate and we going to put it on the Washington football team. Let me tell you something. First of all, somebody said the Steelers are ducking the Washington football team, and then they said you almost lost to RG3. All I know which, is, which is – check. Go ahead. No, it's all true. RG3 was good. We The Baltimore played us close. Dallas almost got us. Like, it, it's all true. When Mike T calls them out and says they played like it was a JV performance, that's not going to happen back to back weekends. I'm, I'm, I'm going. The boys will beat them by by more than fourteen. All right, all right now, because Chase Young going to hunt. It's all they right. said TJ I'm, who? I'm, they got Chase Young. I'm I'm nervous though, cause cause <laughs> Bud, we lost Bud for the year. That's a bad Ooh. loss for us on our on the defensive side. But you got. Pittsburgh winning, right? On on the I got record. Pittsburgh winning, fourteen. Okay. All right, and last but not least, our last pick'em is presented by Red Diamond Coffee and Tea, and it's not a pick'em; it's just the playbook to success. How do we stop this losing streak to Boston College? O and six. What, I, what you I, think, Jay Williams? One, one, we're at home. Two, the boys are pissed off because we went to Florida State and Florida State pulled the okie doke on us and we couldn't play. So mm-hmm. I got them anxious to play. They're going to be ready. We just got to match their physicality up front. Those, they, they, they traditionally been really mm-hmm. good up front, Boston College, with the run game and, and, and how physical the run game is. So if we can if we can stop the run, um, but I like I like us at home after not playing – I think we're eager. We're ready to. We're ready to to, to go. Um, two more week. Two more weeks of football. We, we're we're ready. I, I, I like us in this one. And the senior day, and you know how what the feeling is, man. That last game, home game. Yeah. Is, is yeah. different. You can't put it into words. So I'm with you. I just think you know with Boston College, you got to be focused. Um, win up front. Don't turn the ball over and, and take advantage of every opportunity you get because that's a real solid football team and they balance and they can beat you both ways. So it's like you say about, about the Virginia Cavaliers basketball team, man, defense, defense, right. defense, defense. So there you go, man. Hopefully um, your Pittsburgh Steelers don't let you down, man. They don't let you I hope not, because I, I won't hear these Washington up. team. Oh, I know. So you can't do come on, Jay Willie. Let's call Mike. Hey, Mike, come on, man. I know. Yeah, I won't hear the end of it if we lose to them. <laughs> It'll be bad. Especially from Jeff White. Jeff White will rub it in my in my face. <laughs> <laughs> and also want to remind fans they can tune in to Jay Willie versus not Jay Willie versus they see how they try to get me uh UVA versus Kent State on ACC Network at 6 p.m. um there you have it man support the who's I haven't got a chance to really drop a podcast on y'all just yet but I've been paying attention man I definitely like what I see y'all doing a heck of a job and y'all recruiting and getting the pieces y'all need man I I do say that about y'all y'all get what you need and what fit 
and you don't follow the Lamborghinis and the the Teslas. You know what I'm saying? So salute to you, Jay Willie, and all that you guys do, man. Appreciate you. Thanks for having me on, man. Yes, sir. Check them out, man. Check out the Who, 6 p.m. They still the champs. The champs was here. We're going on break. <laughs> <laughs> Fourth side, I'm your host, Amal Hawkins. This last segment, appreciate Jay Willie for coming in. Appreciate Chris Slade. You know we got to preview the game versus the Boston College Eagles. As we stated, well, I didn't state, but Jay Willie did, that we had an unexpected bye week versus Florida State. We still need them to kick in for that, that few, though. I need that. But uh, let's go ahead, get into the preview, bring up the graphic, what we need to do to beat the Boston College Eagles. Keys to the game, intentional grounding. Brennan, leg strong, and no peaking. And y'all asking me, what does all that mean? Well, I'll tell you what all that means when we roll the video, because that's what we do. We got to bring you some video and keys to what's going on. So roll the tape, fellas, and I'll say what I mean. So intentional grounding. Their quarterback, he's a good one. Fifth in the ACC in passing, but nothing to sneeze at. 256 yards per game, but he still has 17 touchdowns to five interceptions. Brennan, moving along. Let him use his legs. Uh, my offensive line is a good matchup with BC, uh, but if things break down, let my boy cook. Lucky lefty. Throw it to Pogen. Throw it to the Arab there. Lavelle Davis Jr. Throw it to Billy Kemp. Throw it to Terrell Jana. Throw it to Henry. Man, I could just keep going, but you, you get the gist. And last but not least, no peaking. Don't get caught looking ahead to Virginia Tech. Nothing is promised. We got to win this game. Again, nothing is promised. So you got to take care of what you can control. And what you can control is this game Saturday versus Boston College. Don't look at those guys, those turkeys down the street. Pay attention to this Eagles. Hey, you got to pay attention to this bird before you can get to that bird. And with that being said, you know what my nickname is. But I'm Amaya Hawkins, and this was the Foresight. Appreciate you for tuning in.